How's everyone doing? We're good? Yeah. Welcome back. Need day. Fire away. Oh, microphones on both sides. <clears throat> Big day yesterday too, by the way, huh? That was fun. So I couldn't help but notice uh, over the course of here, you, that you guys went to the Chiefs and Andy Reid and everything, and kind of used a little bit of what they got going offensively in the way that they do the creation of plays and how to kind of you know, mind meld if you will with the receiver. How much does that influence into your offense and how much more do you think you're going to have this year, especially with some, some guys back that know what they're doing? Well, um, you know, obviously very gracious them to let us come in and watch, watch and practice for a day, and, and they're, they're super hospitable and, you know, there's a lot of relationship that we have with guys and their staff and what they've done. But I think when you talk about things that they have done in the past and what he's known for and his staff and the things that we want to try to do in terms of imagination and creativity, right, and using personnel a lot of different ways, you know, that's who we want to be too. So it's an easy fit to go over and spend some time with them and um, profession develop, if you will. And again, they're, they're super hospitable, so, so very, very thankful for, for that. Um, but you had pointed out, with the experience that we have coming back, and, and I know I had said this in here before, uh, when you have experience coming back and players coming back, in theory that should allow you to add more offensive volume because they have a good understanding of things that already have been done. And when you make equations to pro football, when you think about having you know, people who have played college football and then you have guys on their roster that are veterans for however long, imagine the amount of things that they know and the things that they can do and the little adjustments that they can make and tweak on a weekly basis to, to add stress to a defense. Um, we're, we have that in a, you know, with a lot of our, our returning players. And a credit to our guys, uh, this fall, we, we put a lot on them because I, I told her, especially our guys who are returning starters and returning players, the production that you pointed out, I said, we, we, we're, you're not going to get bored, right? It's our job as coaches to make sure that you're mentally stimulated and still growing. That's our job to develop them. So we have to develop our best players have to get better. And we have to develop the guy who just took his first college football snaps this fall. So when you think about what you're doing offensively, you need to be able to do both those things. You have to cater to both those kind of student athletes. Okay. And so at times you have two different installs. You have two different ways that you're, you're going about things because the Luke Grimm's of the world, right, need more to stimulate them mentally and help them grow than let's just say, you know, Jared Sample, who, who just showed up here and had his first college football camp right now. Okay. And so they're in the same position. We have to teach them, we all have to grow, they're all individuals, so we have to have them move together. But to your point, with the production back, with the people back, you can go in, you can do all these new things, and they're executing really well, but then you can go back and just call, I call the day one stuff, and, then, and it's like they don't, they don't skip a beat. So it's, it's, been, it's been really rewarding to watch them do that this fall. One more question for you. With Jalen, obviously you got to see some very highs for the injury last season. What do you want to see out of him this year to improve the bottom line? You know, continued growth. I've commented before about what he's doing well, the growth of, of him understanding what we're doing, um, the growth of, of him knowing, you know, the ins and outs of all the plays. Um, some of the things that we've started to do, and, and again, it's our job as coaches to develop them, and he, and he wants to have the opportunity, like a lot of our players, to be able to play beyond college. Well, we look at who those quarterbacks are, the things that they do, and how they communicate to their other players and receivers and tight ends and backs and protections. They have to basically be a coach on the field. And so we're giving those guys some of those opportunities in fall camp to, 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 you know, we let them run some meetings sometimes and watch Skelly as, a, as an offensive skill position group. And it's been, been good for them to stand in front of the group because I'm talking about Jason too here, right? When, when I say about Jalen, where they need to step and grow, um, you know, to, to take more ownership, if you will, right? Feel they have ownership. And I think he does and he believes that he has that uh, in the quarterback spot to really understand, hey, I know the ins and outs of what's going on here. I can – command the attention and the detail that's necessary for all the other positions to execute. I was going to ask about Jason. We just heard from Lance, super complimentary about how he's improved on and off the field. Just how has that manifested itself from your perspective and how much confidence does that give you, especially when Jane was not always on the practice field? So yeah, I've talked about here before. I mean, how many teams, did anyone go back and look, by the way, how many teams have starting quarterbacks at the Power 5 level that have won games, right? And have, how many of them have two on the roster? What a blessing. And he's had a great camp. I'm super fired up for Jason. Very proud of him and what he's doing because when you think about what our core values of our program are, we talk about daily improvement and buying in to, to the process, you know, getting 1% better every day. When you look at Jason Bean when he first stepped foot on this program, because he showed up when we showed up, right, and how he is now, 
it embodies everything we're talking about. It is the, it's a great example of somebody who's just getting better every day. So does it give us a lot of confidence? Heck yeah, it does. Right? It, <clears throat> I don't think anyone would who's got two starting quarterbacks that have won games before at this level. And in terms of the play creation process they would do before, just how's that been going with the players? I think the receivers said they were going to meet with you today. Just oh, yeah. See, here we go. So I got receivers and running backs still to meet. But let me tell you, the three groups I've met with, the O-line, the most surprising, I won't lie to you, has been the offensive line. They came in with some stuff, and I was like, really well thought out. And it wasn't just a bunch of, you know, hey, here's let's put eight linemen on the field, right, and throw me the ball kind of stuff. Although Pooney did one of those deals. He kind of – Remember we were joking about come and take a snap? Was that here we're talking about? He did that. And I said, come on now, right? <laughs> but they came up with some good things, and it's fun to see them. And, and, and really, as a coach and a teacher, right, and that's what we are, all we're trying to do is get these young men who right, to critically reflect on what they're doing and what their, really their goals are. And for them to be able to do that and not come in with a bunch of just BS, right, except for the pony taking a snap, okay, Uh like shows that they're getting it and you know what I mean that they understand what we're trying to do and they kind of know some of the ins and outs of what we're doing offensively so it's been it's been fun to watch I have the receivers and running backs still to do and we'll see how many receivers are on the field at the same time right <laughs> same thing with the running backs but but it's good you know and, they, and they, they take it serious and I have to I have a notebook in my office on the desk and it just says it's players place and the things they come up with and I get them they send me messages and stuff that they find on social media or whatever it is so it's awesome how have you gone about trying to get continued growth for Jalen as he deals with his back? Uh, the same way you would with any injured player. You manufacture and make sure and, you know, um, they understand the mental reps that are necessary. So if you watch, he's out there taking mental reps from behind, watching him going through the progressions. Um, after time, he'll, he'll be in my ear and whisper, you know, he needs to build the ball here or that was really good. You know what I mean? He's, he's really quick to uh, – um, compliment his teammates when he sees it, recognize a good read, right? Obviously, Cole Ballard has has um, his reps have increased, and so there's a few snaps where Cole's doing a heck of a job making a great read, and, and Jalen's super excited and happy for him. Uh, but so it starts there. It starts with keeping him engaged. Um, you know, I think when, it, when we do, so we have um, you know uh, a whole cut up that we make for these guys to watch and have them stay engaged in ways. To, okay, here's the play that we just installed. Here's 10 different snaps of teams from pro football to college football running something similar, look at it and see how it is, right? So we, so we do those sort of things off the field for them to make sure you stay engaged. But, but it's good. What are your hopes for Tanaka Scott this one? Tanaka Scott, um, the hopes for him, just like anybody, is to be better tomorrow than he is today, right? And he's been doing that, right? And you get into the, the thick of fall camp. Um, and I would, I'll never put – a number on anybody to say, here's how many reps, here's how many targets, here's how many, because it's all variable week to week, right? It, 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 things that we can't control. Um, but going through the summer and the training, I thought he had a really nice spring. Going the summer, had some really good moments in the fall, looking for the consistency, right, from, from anybody who hasn't played significant snaps. That's what you would look for, and you'd say that about that. When it comes to players designing plays, is that something you guys did at Buffalo? Uh, maybe not as in depth as we are now with every position. Um, and of course, through the years, you always have players come in and give you ideas or talk about doing this or doing that. Right. But, but it was, uh, intentional for them to want to take some ownership or for us to give them feel like they have some ownership in what we're doing. Okay. And I said, you got to sell it. And I, I tell them, I said, I tell them my thought process this is my thought process about any play that we do or run or install. If it, if it, we install in a meeting. Okay, we understand. And then we go walk through it, right, which is the next step of, of evolving how to run a play. And, and so-and-so struggles to do the, the do lineup right or move right in the walkthrough. i have got to recorrect it there, and then we go run it at 11 11. I said, you think that's going to come out of my mouth on a Saturday? It's not, right? So when you present something, when you do it in a meeting, we're always evaluating. When we do something in a meeting, if you understand it, like let's say it's a play design for whatever, pick a position or a player. That's probably he's going to get the ball. <clears throat> Maybe as he work hard in the move or motion or whatever. And he struggles in the meeting to understand that and comprehend that, and then he struggles again in the walkthrough for it. That's it. We ain't going to call that play. Right? And I tell him that. That's the thought process. So if you have these ideas and these plays, you better be all in and getting it done because otherwise it never comes out of mouse on Saturdays. And obviously, you know that's you can't be wasting time practicing things that you're not calling on Saturdays. That's that's a bad deal. That's that's when you that's losing football. Right, so we avoid that. That's why I tell them it's got to make a lot of sense if they come up with something. 
I'm curious on the offensive line, um, Armage, Reed Adams, just what have you seen from him in camp and what do you feel like he brings to that front five? Well, he, uh, he has been playing as consistent as he has this fall, uh, all, ever. And uh, that's good to see. He stepped up. He recognized an opportunity right there to be able to play significant snaps because there's competition. There always will be. I know Coach Leipold and Coach Fuchs have already probably talked about these things, but, you know, how, I want to have, you know, eight guys ready to go and we want to be in a situation where, you know, you can plug and play and always have the five best out. We've talked about that before. But he has been able to demonstrate uh, in practice consistency that he wants that opportunity to be the starting offensive line, be part of that team. And uh, it's good. Now, of course, there's other guys who are trying to compete to be that same spot. And uh, it's been his consistency this fall that, that has really elevated him and given us confidence to be able to put him out there. Uh, but him, what does he bring to the table? He brings some size and speed and some physicality that we really, really like. You know, he is, he is big. And if you all remember, I think we've talked about it here before, he was really big when he first got here. And he's really pretty lean right now, and he moves exceptionally well for a guy his size. And that's that's we look for that in our offensive line. We, we want to make sure that we have guys who can move, right? They got to be athletic because we want to be able to create a lot of distortion with those guys. A couple of guys I want to ask you about, kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum. When you when you first got here and, and started working with Tori Lockham, um, what, what was your approach then? How has it changed? And, and, and what do you like about kind of his versatility and, and what you guys can do with him? Well. <laughs> It's so hard to think back. It's because it seems it's not that far long ago, right? Yeah. But it is really right? in your vision, and because you're learning every player, and you're learning uh, about them as individuals, right? I, I've said it here before. It's so important as a coach to really understand what players' capabilities are and what their limitations are, and you can always morph around those things. Yeah, and so we're just trying to figure that out. And the feedback we got from people that were here in the film is, you know, he's an athlete. He can play in the backfield. He played quarterback in high school. He can play the receiver room. Uh, you look at last fall or two falls, you know what I mean? He's exclusively running back, right? He has an injury, okay? Then you look at uh, last fall, a guy that you would recognize, our ability to be able to put him, you know, he's playing running back. He's motioning out of the backfield. So his versatility is exactly what you pointed out is what we really love about him, right? And so for him to be able to continue – to develop and progress in the backfield and progress as a receiver in the perimeter um, is is very helpful and a very versatile tool for us to be able to use. Do, do you have freedom to, to plug in elsewhere? I know you have freedom, sorry, but, but yeah. would you have the capability to do so? If, any, yeah, any spot, any place. Okay. And I, you've heard me say it before, and I mean this, like six linemen packages, seven linemen, yeah. right? Four or five running, whatever, right? I mean, one of the best things we have right now is that we have some guys that are hungry to play and demonstrating that they want to play. So we want to be able to utilize them that way. Yeah. And, and he's the, one of those. The, the opposite end of that is, is Mike Ford, who you've known a lot longer. Um, what do you like about where he's at right now? And I think he's the same guy. Uh, we just heard Lance, I think, talk about he can play any of those yeah. five positions. Literally played a game last year. He played center guard and tackle. Yeah. Right? So he's super versatile. And what, what he has and allows him to do is he's got some athletic. He's a high school wrestler. And so he's got this athleticism. He's got some natural – understanding of leverage and and you know the things necessary to block and so he's able to kind of slide in and out of different spots and, and do that so much like what you just talked about with Tori there's some versatility with Michael Ford mm -hmm. but he brings back you know another year of starting experience right and um, I think we all know this it is hard to replace experience right and it's hard to beat that out it's hard to um, as we all, whatever, you go through life, and it's football too, right? When somebody plays, whatever, let's just say a 1,000 plus snaps, that's hard. That's hard to be, you know, no matter how athletic or big or strong or fast someone else could be, it's hard to replace that kind of experience in games and then technique-wise and what he's done. So um, his versatility as an offensive lineman is a big deal for us as well. You would have never thought this when you first met him, I don't think. You would have not projected him to the power five level and all that. But but now that you see it and he's done what he's done here, starting all these games and that kind of thing, does it, does it make sense to you? Did you know that he had that kind of potential? Well, I'll, I'll answer this, that question this way. That's a great question. I think and believe that the, the lines get very blurry between every level of college football, right? Um, when I was coaching Division three football, we had some receivers that would be playing mm -hmm. at this level. One still in the NFL. Right. So to say that he couldn't do that when we were recruiting him, I, I don't know. You know, I don't know if I would go as far as to say that. I would say this, though. 
when a young man demonstrates the capability and the buy-in to just get better every day, and they don't miss practice, and they're always available, and they're always dependable, that seems to be a very common denominator about people who are success at college football at any level. And he's that. Mm-hmm. And so if you ask me if this guy's going to be gritty and get better every day and grit it out, could he play at the power five level? I'd say, yeah, because he does those things. Yeah. Right? And too many times at every level of football, and we do this too, there's measurables involved that, you know, sometimes ding people and say they can't do it. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of people out there too that don't have the measurables, but they got all that other stuff and they figure out how to do it. He's that guy. Who's the receiver? Kumro, Jake Kumro. Oh, yeah. Yep. Shout out Kumro, if he's listening. <laughs> Andy, we've we talked about Daniels and Bean. We know they're one and two. I'm curious about that third spot. How's the competition doing? What are you seeing from those guys? You know, so between Ben, Cole, Mikey, okay, and TJ, the other quarterbacks in the room, uh, Cole, Cole has been taking most of the three reps right now. Um, you know, and, and he's kind of earned those. He's got some moxie and savvy that you really don't anticipate seeing from somebody who's in their very first fall football camp, right, in college football. Um, he's doing good. Coach Zabrowski doing a great job with all those guys, okay? But Cole's been able to go out there and we're able to operate, you know, how we practice. And we've mentioned these things before about, you know, operating at two huddles and making sure we're getting a lot of reps for everybody. Um, he's been able, He's allowed us the ability to go out there and continue to practice and have confidence that we can still train and develop the other positions without having to really quote unquote um, lessen you know what we do offensively right so we put a lot of him he's done a really good job not saying of course anytime I mention somebody doing a good job you know you feel like you're you're, you're insinuating that someone else is not doing a good job those other guys are they're grinding and and Ben is just a fantastic teammate and goes out there and got unbelievable presence and we talked about Mikey in this room before about his his athleticism what he brings to the table um you know, all all critical components for what we're looking for in that room. Coach, I want to talk more about Jason real quick. Uh, given the way that that bowl game ended last year, what does it say about his character for him? A lot of guys would have left town as quickly as possible for his character to stick around and want to come back for another year. Well, it kind of says some of the things that we had talked about a little bit before about with when we were, at, were about Mike Ford and guys who benefit from having another year of college football, which Jason is, so have the choice to be able to come back, want to just get better, right? Showing the growth that he's had, put himself in position that he's going to be placed, right? So it says a ton about him to not just hit the ejection button and, and go do something different, whatever that might be, and say, you know what? I want to continue to see this thing through. I feel like I can do this, this, and this to help the program, and he's doing it, which is awesome for us and him. So, shout out to him. Coach, can you go over just kind of the sheer volume of plays? <laughs> a, a couple of years ago, you might have, whether in season or after the year, said, okay, these 25 plays don't work. We're going to dump them. We're going to evolve those into something else compared to where you are, are now, where receiver, lineman, running back, quarterback, how many hundreds of plays do they have to have in their head where they can't think about it? They just have to know what the play call is and what it means to them. So when you think about the things that we do on offense, the best analogy I'll give you is, uh, do you have, uh, do you play, you've ever played with Legos? Okay, remember, you know what I'm talking about though, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, my kids are 13, 11 now, so they're slightly out of the Lego phase, but those who have, that are younger, no. First of all, don't step on them, right? <laughs> Second of all, they usually come in this giant bucket, right? And when you think about what we do offensively, that's what we are. We have a giant bucket of Lego pieces. And all those Lego pieces are a term or a definition, right, that tells somebody to do something. And so what might look like a totally different play to the layman, to our kids, it's the same as something else they've already done. We've just added this little Lego piece on top of it or next to it to create something different in appearance to the defense. So when we talk about offensive volume, we're not necessarily talking about new concepts all the time. We're maybe talking about different ways to dress up those concepts to present more challenges to defense. Now, there are new concepts that add that get added, and anytime you think about adding something, you have to evaluate the shelf life of that play and know exactly why you're putting that play in. And a lot of times, I think coaches would tell you this too, for everything you add, you should take something out. I call it the uh, Kelly Bundy rule. For those of you who remember married with children and she was studying for that test and all this information came in, something had to go out, 
right? And that's true. There's a Kelly Bundy rule in everything we do. If we put this in, do we have to take something out, right? And so as a staff, and this is where we engage our players too. Can we just do this? Oh, yeah, that's easy, coach. Great. If you go, hey, can we do this? And they go, well, and you can see the wheels spin a little bit. Okay, maybe we can. All right, so, that, that, so we go through that reflection process through spring and fall, right? Because we don't want to be in a situation now where we're doing a bunch of trial and error, trying to figure out what's going to work and not work. We have a good idea what's going to work, right? It's how do we present it? How do we put our right, our right Lego pieces, if you will, the individual, the players, in those spots and stacking all those together to make them work, you know, you know to, to make whatever a presentation to the defense that's going to be different and stressful for them to, to have to manage. So to our players, we use the word same as teaching all the time. That's the same as this. Yep, okay. Right? And they get it. They start to get it, so it allows the ability to do a lot of different things. Does shelf life change on a play? Yeah, depending on your personnel. It depends on um, how it has to be presented. It depends on the people you're playing, the defensive structures that you're playing. There's definitely a shelf life. And you might go into a game identifying, hey, this is a short shelf life play. It's going to be called one time. And we call those in our – you would ask our offense players, and I don't know if they've met them already or you're going to, just call them, hey, what does coach mean by a one-moment call? And they'll probably tell you, this is going to get called one time, and you got to do it right. Whatever it might be. It might be some shot. It might be some run scheme where there's a bunch of guys pulling or whatever. It's going to happen one time. We've got to get the right look, and you got to go do it. So, um, you know, when, when you look, and if you – some of our guys have talked about our six-headed dragon. Well, those are our concepts that we run repeatedly over and over again. We dress them different. The uh, – They've got a lot of reps at those things. It's just presenting them a bunch of different ways. And then the plays that you have beyond that, they're the ones that typically have a shelf life. Coach, I asked uh, Todd Reasons yesterday just how excited he's been able to watch you guys build this program. And he loves the, the high-octane offense. He wishes he played in your offensive scheme when he was here. But how important is that to be able to keep that on that base, the fast-paced offense, or maybe even go faster this year, too? Well, you know, when you talk about octane and speed, you know, you're be talking about a lot of times your default setting would be, you know, reps per minute. You know, no, necessarily we're not trying to go out there and snap the ball like some teams just play fast. I think it's one way to create stress on a defense is by by playing fast and incorporating tempo. Uh, but but we just simply want to be stressful as an offense. And I said I think I've said this in here before. We want to simply be the most stressful team in the country to defend. All right, and there's a lot of ways to create stress, right? Motions and playing fast, as you talked about, different personnel groupings and formations, and right, okay. Um, and I hope that we evolve this year into the point where people are worried about the matchups too, because that's incredibly stressful to figure out how to tackle somebody that you're worried about tackling or covering someone that you're worried about covering or getting off of blocks of individuals who block really well. Um, so we want to make sure that we're always incorporating those things in terms of what we're doing. And uh, Todd was out at our, our, our practice or our walk through there night, so it was good to talk to him a little bit. And he, you know, he got the chance to have the quarterbacks and chop it up a little bit with them. And it was good. It was good to see him. And, and, that, and some of the nun guys were like, I don't know who that is. I go, that's his name right there in the bowl, right there in the ring of honor. And uh, they're like, oh, yeah. So it was cool. It's a good, good moment for those guys to, to see. Jalen and Jason knew who he was, of course, and he knew who they were. So it was awesome. Anything else? All right.